Okay, yesterday we left here where we have to find out the zeros of a polynomial. And I mentioned that in your textbook, you only have question for linear polynomials. And I'll discuss with you quadratic polynomial as well. So before we uh, start question number four, uh, let's write down a note. I'll just be writing down in the form of uh, bullet points. The first thing we want to do is we want to take a px equals to 0 and find x. That's it. And if I have to quote an example here, I can simply quote if px is 2x plus 5. To find its zeros, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take px equals to 0. So this would imply that 2x plus 5 equals to 0. And from here, you just have to find out the value of x. So this value will be the 0 of px. And if you want to cross check, you can substitute this value in px itself and see the answer will be 0. This is what we discussed yesterday. Now we are moving on to the next uh, polynomial that is quadratic polynomial. Again, the first step is to take px equals to zero means we'll be converting the polynomial into a polynomial equation. Then after that, we want to factorize the polynomial into linear factors. And it's not always necessary that every quadratic polynomial can be factorized into linear factors. Sometimes it might not be converted into linear factors. So if possible, then convert. And in the case where it's not possible, we have a different method. That's trial and error. But mostly whenever you are given a question where you have to find out the zeros of a quadratic polynomial, it usually is factorizable into linear polynomials. And then what you want to do afterwards is you want to take each linear factor equals to zero and from there you want to find out x I'm going to now take up a few examples here so that you can understand how we are going to work with a quadratic polynomial before we actually start with the exercise questions. If anyone's writing down, please let me know here. Ma'am, please wait. Ma'am, please wait. Sure, sure. So I'm going to take a few examples before we start. 
start with exercise questions. So I'll just do it right here. Now, the important part or important step for this particular type is that you should be able to factorize. You should know how to factorize a quadratic polynomial. If anyone does not remember how a quadratic polynomial is factorized, you need to take a look at your uh, chapter 14 from previous year's book, Factorization of Algebraic Polynomials. You learn the factorization with the help of identities and splitting the middle term. Maybe that rings a bell, splitting the middle term. So there are two ways actually in which a quadratic polynomial can be factorized. First is if your quadratic polynomial forms an identity, an algebraic identity, then you can factorize it with the help of that identity. Other than that, if you cannot form an identity from that quadratic polynomial, you can always split the middle term and then find out the zeros, uh, sorry, the linear factors. Then there is third option, which we learn next year, because you have a chapter in particular based on quadratic equations. So quadratic equations are quadratic polynomials converted into equations. So as for now, we will be focusing on the first two, using identities and splitting the middle term. If anyone does not remember, you can just go, like take a look at that chapter. And if you need any help, you can just ask. So I'll take a simple question here, which can be easily factorized. So let us say that px is x square minus 1. Now this resembles your identity. I hope everyone can see this resembles a square minus b square. So the first step is to take px equals to 0. So this would imply that x square minus 1 equals to 0. From here, we want to factorize the quadratic polynomial. That's the next step after we have taken it equal to 0. So those who can recall this, it's fine if you cannot you can just write this down that this resembles a square minus b square, the left hand side, and it can be factorized using the identity a square minus b square. So you will have x plus 1 and x minus 1 as the two linear factors. So the, these are the two linear factors. And what do we mean when we say two linear factors? There are two algebraic expressions. If we find product prime, we will get our original polynomial. Mil that is what factors are. Second thing, both of these factors are linear. Their degree is 1. And then we have the final step to take each of these factors equals to 0. From there, we will find out the values of x. And why do we do so? Because when we write down that x plus 1 into x minus 1 is equal to 0, the product of two values is 0. This will be only possible if either one of them is 0 or both of them are equal to 0. So either you have the value x plus 1 equals to 0, and this will imply that x equals to 1 or you will have the second value equals to zero, which gives you x equals to one. Or it is possible that both are happening at the same time, that x takes the value minus one as well, and then there is a possibility that x takes the value one as well. So these are the two zeros. We usually don't write this. We write down that this is either or condition. So I'm just going to put it this way. Let's take one more example. The first step is to take px equals to 0. This will imply that x square plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. We are looking for the values of x which are going to make this expression equal to 0. Now we want to factorize our left hand side. If you can figure out that left hand side is forming an identity, well and good. Otherwise, we will go with splitting the middle term. So right now, can anyone identify if there is identity applicable here? X no. square plus two a square plus b square plus two ab plus four square. We have 
that's correct we have two square terms we have two square terms and then the third term the one in the middle is actually the double of product of x and phi so you have to identify two square terms first of all in order to use an identity hamesha jab bhi identity applicable hogi to a quadratic polynomial you will be able to see two square terms perfect squares and the third term if present will be double the product of the terms which have been square so if you look at the middle term it is actually double the product of these numbers in the brackets jo square ke andar humne values likhi hain x and 5 एक्स और फाइव का प्रोडक्ट आएगा उसको आप डबल कर दो आपको मिडल टर्म मिल जाएगी सो दैट्स हाउ वी नो दैट दिस इज एन आइडेंटिटी एंड द आइडेंटिटी इज फॉर्म्ड बाय टेकिंग द वैल्यूज व्हिच आर इनसाइड द स्क्वेयर्स एक्स एंड फाइव एंड बिटवीन दीज टू द साइन विल बी टेकन फ्रॉम द प्रोडक्ट टर्म द प्रोडक्ट टर्म इज पॉजिटिव सो वी आर गोइंग टू पुट अ प्लस साइन बिटवीन दीज एंड दिस बिकम्स अ होल स्क्वायर इक्वल्स टू जीरो एंड व्हाट वी वांट टू डू इज एट दिस पॉइंट we are going to write this square in expanded form so i hope everyone knows what square means square means a repeated multiplication so we want to see two linear factors here so x plus 5 whole square means x plus 5 into x plus 5 and then from here we will take each linear factor equal to 0 so and you can see you are getting the same value from both although the value is repeated we can say there is just one value which makes this polynomial equal to zero there is only one zero of this polynomial but it is repeated and this repetition actually implies that there are two factors which exist for this particular quadratic polynomial and now i'm going to take another example taking you to your uh, splitting the middle term part so we have x square minus 4x plus 3 uh shri ji please get back to me after the class after your classes are over i'll uh, see what's wrong i don't think i've actually evaluated all the papers just just get back to me after your class so right now this particular example as you can see does not form any identity at all we have only x square there is no other perfect square so we have the option to split the middle term and i hope everyone remembers how do we split the middle term so the first step will be to take the polynomial equal to 0 so that will imply that x square minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0 and now for the factorization i'm going to split the middle term for splitting the middle term i want to look at the coefficient of x square and the constant term that should be the product of my numbers so product should be 1 into 3 positive 3 and the sum will be equal to the middle term the coefficient of the middle term so i need two factors whose sum is minus 4 and the product is 3 Positive three. Minus three minus one. That's correct. Minus three and minus one. If I add them, the total will be minus four, and the product will be positive three. So that's how I'm going to split my middle term now. The first term stays the same. The last term stays the same. The middle term will be split up, and since the middle term is the term containing x, after splitting it up, both my terms will contain x. and if you combine the middle two values you get the original polynomial but we are not going to combine it because this is being done deliberately by us after this you want to pair up the first and second term factorize them third and fourth term factorize them that would mean that there is something common present in these two pairs from the first pair you will see something common and from the last two pairs you need to take something common so from the first pair of terms i can take common x and i'll be left with x minus 3 in my brackets 
from the last two terms there is nothing common so i can always take x uh, sorry one common if anyone is not able to recall this it's okay you have your time because the next exercise has questions where you want to factorize quadratic polynomials in particular there is a separate question where you want to learn the factorization of quadratic polynomials so you will be able to do it again once uh, right now if you are not able to do it what is the next step x minus 3 yeah that's right we have uh, products now two products monomial into binomial monomial into binomial from both of these products the binomial is common both these products contain the same binomial so i can separate this binomial and i'll be left with the monomials inside these are the two linear factors of my quadratic polynomial and after this i want to take each of them equals to 0 take each factor equal to 0 and from there find x so x minus 3 equals to 0 will give me x equals to 3 and the second factor when equated to 0 gives me x equals to 1 so these are the two zeros of px you put x equals to 3 your expression will become 0 you put x equals to 1 your, your expression will become 0 now all these were based on what you have done earlier i'm going to take another example which is a little different from the ones we just did and then we will just start with the exercise so let's say px is equal to 3x square plus 5x again the first step is to take the polynomial equals to 0 which implies 3x square plus 5x equals to 0 and now we want to factorize our left hand side and as you can see there is no identity applicable we cannot split the middle term because there is no middle term there are just two terms what i can see although is that both these term contain a common factor x is that correct yes ma'am yes, ma so take x common after you take x common you are left with this linear polynomial in the brackets so these are the two linear factors and what's the next step once you have obtained the linear factors please don't take x to the right hand side and divide by 0 like 0 by x don't make it 0 uh, by x and uh, write it as 0 You want to use both these linear factors. X ko eliminate nahi karte na yaha pe. You want to take each of these linear factors equals to zero. So taking the first factor equal to zero and taking the second factor equal to zero, you will get two values of x. So one is as such x equals to zero. From the second factor, you get x equals to minus five by two. So these are the two zeros for this particular polynomial. So this is something you want to remember that there is a possibility that the value zero itself is a zero of a polynomial. This is something which Taran Pleet asked me yesterday for the constant polynomial. You can go over all these uh, polynomials later on after the classes are done for the day, and then you can just see if there is any trouble. All right. Uh, I'm going to take up the questions from the exercise now, and since your exercise contains only linear polynomials, it will be very easy for you to factorize those. If anyone's writing down, please let me know before I move on to the next page. So let's just take up exercise. page number 35 so i'm simply writing down the answer take your polynomial equal to 0 and find out x that's it this is what you want
Now there is something that I have marked in part five here. When you try to take the polynomial equals to zero, you see you get the value of x as zero divided by three. So whenever you have such a fraction where the numerator is zero, the denominator must be non-zero. Only then you can give the answer as zero. It cannot be zero over zero. Zero over zero is not defined. So you want the denominator to be a non-zero value. Only then you can further simplify it and write it as zero itself. This is something you want to take a look at in sixth part, where they are saying that the x is equal to a x. Along with this, they have given that a is not equal to zero. Now this actually has nothing to do with the while you are solving the question. But this is important with the actual value you will obtain. The value that you will obtain once you take the x equals to zero, you will see that a appears in the denominator of a fraction whose numerator is zero. So let's take the x equals to zero. This will imply that a x equals to zero, and from here x comes out to be zero over a. So right now this is where it. is important that the denominator should be non zero and then you can give the answer as zero so zero divided by a non zero number the answer will be zero that's how this value is important a not equals to zero you will see uh, this kind of thing mentioned in various equations jahan pe denominator zero ban raha hai they will give such kind of thing usko solving mein kahin pe bhi nahi use karna aapne bas jab aapka answer aayega tab aapko ek baar cross check karna hai ki denominator kahin zero to nahi ban raha and we have to mention this while attempting uh it will be given in the question but in case it's not given you are supposed to write this down agar ye nahi diya hota a not equals to 0 then we would write we would write down that if a is not 0 then x equals to 0 otherwise the value of x is not defined 0 over 0 is a not defined value you cannot have a rational number with denominator 0 आएंगे आगे क्वेश्चंस आई विल लेट यू नो के आई विल जस्ट हेल्प यू रिकॉल के वहां पे दिया था यहां पे हम लिख रहे हैं जस्ट कीप दिस इन माइंड दैट द डिनोमिनेटर कैन नॉट बी जीरो एंड आई होप नाउ यू कैन डू द लास्ट पार्ट योरसेल्फ आई थिंक आई जस्ट डू इट ओवर हियर सेवंथ पार्ट वी हैव px equals to cx plus d दिस इज अ लीनियर पॉलीनोमियल नाउ एंड दे आर सेइंग c is not zero C is not zero and C D are real numbers. C D belong to the set of reals and this C is not equals to zero is important because if C is zero, your polynomial becomes a constant polynomial, and constant polynomial has no zero. So to make it a linear polynomial, it's necessary that the leading coefficient is not zero. and moreover later we will see that this coefficient actually appears in the denominator so let's take px equals to 0 and find out the value now you can see we already had that c is not equal to 0 and uh, this can be checked here so that's okay this fraction is completely fine and if you observe closely what you can see that this is actually the zero of linear polynomial it is given by minus the constant term over coefficient of x always take a look at this part right above this question this particular part you had a linear polynomial and when you find out it's zero what you obtain is in the numerator you have your constant term and in the denominator you have the coefficient of x and there is a negative so this is how you can obtain the zero of a linear polynomial डायरेक्टली विदाउट टेकिंग इट इक्वल टू जीरो एंड सोल्विंग इट ये सारा सोल्विंग वाला काम नहीं भी करना आप डायरेक्टली ऐसे आंसर लिख सकते हो 
although it's quite easy to do for a linear polynomial because you solved so many linear equations last year. These are just simple facts because this chapter actually will be carried forward in next class also. So all these things will be repeated. And you're going to actually use these in the results. Anyone with any questions here? Uh, and before we start with the uh, next exercise, there is something I want you to ask, uh, want to ask you people, whether or not you have anyone has ever discussed in any of the sections, the division of uh, polynomials, like the long division. Because at present there are students from different sections. So if in any of the sections division of polynomials was discussed last year. Oh, no. Okay. So next exercise actually is based on that, but we will not be doing the actual division. I will discuss that with you. But before that, there are two results which we will directly apply. Now the names are given here. One is the remainder theorem and the other one is the factor theorem. So remainder theorem actually tells us that if we carry out the division of a polynomial with a linear polynomial, polynomial and you divide it with a linear polynomial, what will be the remainder? So one such option is to actually carry out the division. Up actual division carry out karlo or for the remainder As you can see, there is this division done here. Example number six, they are saying divide px by gx and px and gx are given to you. px is a quadratic polynomial, gx is a linear polynomial. And this is how the division has been done. And once the division is complete, you can see what the remainder is. And you will see this is happening on the next few pages as well. So this is uh, another. This is the step actually com after completion. As you can see, once the division is complete, this is the remainder of the I will be discussing this with you and uh, this is what I was asking about. Okay, so uh, this is the without noting it down, just watch how you have to do this. So I'm going to take the same example here. Let us say we have a px equals to x plus 3x square minus 1 and gx is equal to 1 plus x. So these are the two polynomials and we want to carry out the division of px with gx. So this here is your dividend and the second polynomial is your divisor. Okay. So this is a simple fact when we divide two values, ko divide karte hai, the one which is being divided is your dividend and the value by which we carry out the division is your divisor. So this is what we have. Now the first thing we want to fix here is we want to write down our polynomials in standard form. Standard form means your powers of the variable in your polynomial must be in decreasing order. So let's write down px and gx properly. So px actually will be 3x squared square wali term pehle aayegi fir aapke paas x wali term aayegi fir constant aayega similarly gx will be rewritten as x plus 1 this is actually very important to carry out your division and now the way you used to carry out the division of two numbers we will be putting the divisor outside and the dividend inside the division side. Now for numbers, it's very easy to obtain the quotient because numbers ke liye to tables aate hai. To find out the table of x plus 1, we are going to follow a trick here. So the trick is to obtain the quotient in parts. So quotient will be written right here at the top. The first step, now this is my working column, I'll be showing it in the working column. And since this is the first time I'm doing it in the working column, but later on, I will be writing down directly. So first thing is, take the first term from your dividend and your divisor, carry out their division. So first, yeah, 
first term over the first term. First term of your dividend and first term of your divisor. This is 3x square over x. So taking the first term with the first term. Now this is a monomial divided by monomial which you have done earlier. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So I hope this is easily done if I had to write this. So x gets cancelled with x, you have 3x. This will be your first term in the quotient. Anyone with any questions still here? To obtain the first term of your quotient, you're going to divide the first term of the divisor, uh, dividend with the first term of your divisor. Now, the next step is to obtain the value to be written here. Yaha pe kya aega? What you do is your divisor Multiply will be multiplied with the first term of your quotient. So this is what we want to do. Whatever term you just obtained, you're going to use this and multiply your divisor. with 3x and I'm going to do this in the working column again my divisor is x plus 1 I'm going to multiply it with 3x so 3x multiplied by 1 will be 3x positive 3x and then multiply 3x with x 3x square right this is how you can carry out your multiplication. And this expression will be written right below your dividend. And make sure you write like terms below like terms. So 3x square below 3x square, the square terms, and then the linear terms. And what's the next step in division? Change the signs. Subtract. Subtraction. Subtract. The next step is to subtract. So we are going to subtract this binomial from our dividend here. And for that, I'm going to change the signs. So the signs will be changed. As such, the first term was positive. This now has become negative. And the second term was also positive. This will be also negative. So this is what we're going to do here. Subtract. So first term and the first term get cancelled. 3x square minus 3x square. Minus 2x plus 1. Minus yes. 1. This is minus 2x. Now, iske baad jab hum division karte hai, magri value ko niche leke aate hai. So this is what we're going to do. Without changing the signs. Uske sign hi change honge. Jo value subtract hoti hai, hamesha uske sign change honge. Jo value upar hai, uske sign hi change honge. So minus 1 as such niche aja hai. Anyone with any questions? Still here. Mm. Now we have to obtain the second term of the quotient. So let's obtain the second term of our and quotient. Minus two. Yeah. Now we are again going to pick the first first term of whatever we are left with. So I'm going to take the first term and the first term. Minus 2x over x. Minus On two. simplification, this is minus 2. So this is the second term. I'm going to put it in the quotient here. I've put it in the quotient. Please don't forget that. Now I want to multiply my divisor 